Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Red's Tangled Tale, The Untold Stories, Book Two, by Susanna Lynn, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter One. I'm not the silly, naive little girl the storybooks describe me to be. I neither wander the woods aimlessly nor carry baskets of goodies to a decrepit grandmother, though I do live with my gran. Most know me by the color of my hooded cape. Little Red Riding Hood, they call me. But that is not my name. My parents named me Rosalie, though Gran calls me Rose. The name Red came when Gran made my hooded cloak. She claims the thread was spelled by a man who could turn straw into gold, though his name escapes me now. It's believed my hood guards against dark magic. Whether such things are true, I've yet to see. However, I can tell you it set me apart from the rabble of my village. I had spent my whole young life in the shadow of Black's Forest on the outskirts of Ravenmoor. The townsfolk would look down their noses at my family while reaching out their hands for the food and furs we provided at market. After mother and father died, I took up the family business and the gossip and hard stares only got worse. However, that all changed when I discovered an immense stone tower nestled in the heart of the forest. That night events were set into motion that would change my life forever. Let me tell you my untold story. Chapter 2 Though the moon was full, the forest was near pitch under the canopy of trees. I stepped gingerly through the damp thickets, picking a spot with a slight break in the leaves. The limbs swayed in the night wind, allowing enough light to see by, no, by, by to filter in on the clearing. The air was moist and cool, clinging to the exposed skin of my arms and face. My breath created soft pillows when I steadied myself with a slow exhale. A crimson cape surrounded me in a cocoon of warmth, fighting against the coming winter's chill. I hunkered down in the hollow of a tree and waited. It seemed I was not the only creature stirring in Black's forest that evening. Around me the woods sang with the sounds of nocturnal life. Mice skittered across the leaves when I got too close, the gentle hoot of an owl in the distance stalking and waiting just like me. The far-off howl of a wolf called to its companions. It had been near a month since I brought down a wolf. Their pelts were what brought the good money at market. But it wasn't about the money any more thanks to Captain Shaw. Because of the pirate's generosity, I was able to pay off the trader Max and purchase a fine bow. Shaw's kindness allowed me to purchase the needed med medicinals at the apothecary so Gran could recover from illness. No, it wasn't about the money anymore. It was about vengeance. It had been just over a year since I watched a pack of wolves kill my father in these very woods. Before the curse, my father was known around as one of the best hunters in Timberguard, perhaps in the whole of the kingdom of Bruin. People would flock to our village of Ravenmoor to purchase furs and meat from him. Then the curse came. No one rightly knew who brought the curse down on Black's Forest, but a great evil fell over the land and from it was birthed the most vicious wolves ever seen. Hunters and travelers began to go missing. At least parts of them were missing. The savagery of the wolves was something never before witnessed. There was a far greater intelligence in their attack than an average wolf. Soon word spread throughout the kingdom. Travelers refused to take the path through the forest. Merchants were forced to come by ship, making some supplies harder for the villagers of Ravenmoor to obtain. Then, one day, the village woke to billowing clouds of gray smoke in the sky over Black's forest. Gerart, the king of Bruin, had purchased the assistance of a dark sorceress to set the forest ablaze. He was told only fire could purge such evil from the land. Of course, this was not the case. He only succeeded in cutting off everyone west of the forest from the rest of the world and pushing the wolves in closer to the village. In a last effort to completely purge his kingdom of evil, Gerard declared Black's Forest and Ravenmoor no longer part of the kingdom of Bruin, and renamed it the Cursed Land of Timbergard. Soon after, those who could afford to, f those who could afford to, fled to other lands. Those of us who couldn't hunkered down and made the best with what we had. A cargo ship would come in once a month to the port, but this meant holding on to what little food and supplies we had to make through until the next ship arrived. The land in Timbergard was not made for planting. It was too wet and too, far too cold for anything but pine trees to grow. What Timbergard did have in abundance was wild game. Deer, rabbits, and rodents were ripe for the picking. The only problem was no one was willing to brave the forest with wolves. 
no one except my father. Of course, this all happened before I was born. I have never known a time when the curse of the wolves wasn't on the land. As a small child, I can recall father kissing my mother before going out on a hunt. The worry in her face, her shoulders stiff with tension. Then the release when he would return, like the whole cabin took a great breath and let it out. He taught me to hunt. He didn't want to, mind you, and mother took great pains to put an end to it, but I would sneak out of the house and try to follow him into the wood. Finally, he told her it was better to teach me the trade in order to defend myself rather than wait around for me to get killed my, myself, get myself killed. It's ironic, really. I still hunt in Black's Forest, and he lies beneath the earth with nothing more than a carved wood cross to mark his place. The wind began to pick up, throwing the hood of my cape back from my face. A few strands of ebony hair came loose from my long braid, swirling in the breeze around my eyes. I reached for the dagger I kept in my boot, making sure it was still secure. I was best with a bow, but I always kept a knife at the ready. A howl cut through the night. The wolf was much closer now. The answering chorus was far to the east. He would get no help tonight. I pulled an arrow from my quiver, fingering the red feathers of the fletching, while I held my breath in anticipation. My heart raced, pounding so fiercely I could feel it in my ears. I strained to listen against the wind, hoping for a warning to signal the wolf was close. From behind me, I heard a snap, so soft and subtle it could have been a pine cone falling from a tree. But it wasn't. The wolf's growl started low in its chest, rumbling through the cold night. It had circled around, most likely catching my scent when the wind picked up. The wolves were getting smarter, making it much harder to sneak up unnoticed. With my back in the hollow of the tree, I did not have a good vantage point to aim at the beast. The circumstances were less than ideal. He was just behind the tree. I was certain he didn't know exactly where I was, otherwise I would be dead. His long snout sniffed the air in an effort to find me. I was suddenly thankful for the shelter of the large dead pine. I shifted slightly, bringing my feet under me in order to leap if the need arose. I drew back on the arrow. There would be no time to aim given the close proximity. I bolted upright as the wolf let out a blood-chilling howl. The hairs on the back of my neck stood on end. His comrades answered still far to the east, but this time there was an urgency in their reply as though to say, We're coming. The beast knew he had me cornered. He needed only to wait for his pack. My only chance was to face him alone or risk being torn to shreds by the coming attack. I leapt to my feet, whirling around the tree as I turned on my heel. The wolf was black as night, eyes burning like hot coals in the dark. He started, not expecting the surprise. It snarled, drawing back on its haunches in order to leap. Damp leaves and twigs flew as the wolf kicked off from the ground. I didn't aim. I didn't have time. I drew back and let the arrow fly. It sliced through the air, the red fletching the only clue to its whereabouts. Before I was aware of the outcome, I spun, attempting to pull out the beast's reach should the shot fail to make contact with him. The sharp tip sank into the wolf's exposed belly as he barreled through the air toward me. An angry yelp escaped him, the pain throwing him off balance and causing him to fall to the ground. The snarling beast scrambled to get to its feet, exposing his side. I quickly drew a second arrow, letting it loose. The arrow hummed, soaring through the air. The metal tip pierced the wolf's flesh and delivered a killing blow through the lungs. It yelped, falling to the forest floor in a heap of fur. My heart thumped in my head as I tried to steady my breathing. It is done, I thought. The air sparked with howls from the pack. They were searching for him. They would get no answer. <laughs>